We're back with another episode of the group chat. Mm-hmm. I am your host, Brennan Scarlett, a.k.a. B. Scar, a.k.a. Beach, with the other half, my co-host, Deej, the man, the one, the only, Big Gravy, so many nicknames that I can keep going. I just, I'm going to stop right there with those two and let it marinate, but just glad to be back on the group chat, man, just with the guy. Beach, how you doing, Beach? How was your weekend? Man, my weekend was was beautiful. I um I was actually in Idaho. I was in the the great state of Idaho, uh, visiting family, and I spent a couple of days at the the family cabin, which is out in in southeastern Idaho, really close to the Idaho Utah border. Okay. So I flew into Salt Lake City, which Salt Lake City has arguably the best airport in the country it, it's it's one of the best i love flying through there i spent the day in salt lake did a little work had some food at my favorite lunch spot a little coffee and then i went to the cabin man spent thursday friday riding four wheelers going on hikes through the woods having sandwiches up on mountaintops and overlooking the valleys uh of southeastern idaho and seeing hawks glide from treetop to treetop and Boy, hey, Deej, I feel refreshed, man. That's good, man. That feels awesome. I bet the air there was, like, crisp, huh? Like, just Bro, good air. So crisp. Um, And it was the first time that I've been, I went to the cabin uh, in fall, in September. Because, so when we grew up, it was always, like, we'd do a family trip in the summertime. And then, obviously, school starts in September. And for the last, you know, however many years I've been in football season, you know, coming starting in July. So obviously I'm not able to get out to Southeast in Idaho in, in September. So yeah, air was crisp. Fall is, uh, is, is on the way. The leaves are starting to change colors and it was, it was beautiful, man. Uh, how was your weekend? No, nah, man, it was good. Um, could have been better if we would have got a dub, but other than that, it was pretty good. You know, um, it was good to get back out there, get back out there with the guys, start spinning. Man, he's out there. Twenty five. He's out there. Twenty five snaps, and I felt good, man. No complaints. The hardest part probably was like, you know, that suicide back and forth when you're not in on certain packages. (laughs) When you got to run all the way off the field, and you know, the worst part about that is like you looking at the coaches when you're coming off, and they always got that look on their face, like you know, they trying to get the call to the guys, but it's always like a look, kind of panic. And in your head, you're like, what are they doing? Run a hurry up? Do I need to run? Do I need to run faster? Do I got to get off? Do I got to go? Like, and nobody's saying anything. Then you get over there and the office barely done broke the huddle. And it really pisses you off because you spend a lot of energy running off that field. <laughs> get and over your, there. D-line, your D-line coach is freaking out. Get over there. You're out of breath. The worst thing that could happen also is a first down right after and you got to run right back on that field. You might as well stay out there and play that play. Like, <laughs> you ran over there, got a squirt of water, took you another 30-yard jog back on the field. You get to play late. Now you got to do the analysis. But it was just getting back used to it, bro, and it was cool. It was cool. It was good to get back out there. Wish we would have came away with a dub. Had a good performance. So, you know, things looking good for us. I'm excited. Yeah, that's that's great, man. Um Congratulations getting back on the field. Um I didn't get to to watch the game, but man, super super happy for for you and and you know, I was there in Cincinnati last year when you uh when you got hurt and you know, I I saw the process and the journey um and all the hard work that it took to to be back on the field uh, on Sunday. So, man, it's uh there's it's a testament to um to your your willpower, you know what I mean, and and um, and your discipline to be able to come back and and play, man. And I uh, so I, I love to see it. And it is funny because I feel like that that perspective of like <laughs> sometimes the going on and off the field, those little things uh, in the game, it takes some getting used to, right? And folks may you know may not realize that actually when you got to sprint on, you know, because they just got a first down or sprint off because they're on third down, like it gets a little stressful in those moments. <laughs> it gets super stressful, and you you just wait. You sitting there the whole time, like, what is it? What's the 
and you see guys running on, and you like, if they ain't, you, you got to have professionals. Because if you don't have guys who are professional, luckily I'm on a team full of professionals who they come on with the hand signals or whatever, whatever package we in. See, you know, when you got young guys or you got some guys who just think you're just going to run out there and yell some names, like, yo, yo, we in such. No, bro, do the hand signals. Do the hand signals. Don't, nobody can hear you. <laughs> Nobody's looking, listening to you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Signal, signal on your way out there. Signal <laughs> on your way out there. And echo the call. It, it was good. It was good to get out there. The environment was crazy. It is loud in Detroit. And so it, it's, it's dope. Oh, shout out the Detroit fans, man. That they're showing up. They are. They are. We love that. Is it more stressful running off the field or on the field? Off. You don't know what's going on behind you. They could break the huddle. They could speed break and be on that ball right now. And you might be at the numbers. <laughs> and now you got to make the mad dash and do that little stupid ass jump across the line where you think. <laughs> <laughs> that little mini hurdle, that mini ass hurdle that ain't doing nothing, that's never saved anybody from the, the tournament on the field penalty. It's never saved anybody. That little stupid ass. Oh, you feel like as long as my feet was in the air, I wasn't on the field. Like, <laughs> bro, who do you think you are, bro? Jesse Owens. <laughs> Hey, who do you think you long? You a long jump? <laughs> you think that little hop go do something? Well, beautiful man. I uh, I'm looking forward to the season, and uh, you know, this weekend was much better for me, uh, knowing that you was out there doing your thing, doing your thing. So we'll would love to see it um, this this next week, man. Uh, what do you say we we go ahead and, and get into our our college football section? Let's do it, brother. You know, I I, I I'm excited about it this next week of college football. I didn't do so hot this first week, but next week, I'm, I'm excited for what's going on. University of Tennessee is making waves for a couple of different reasons. The first is they added a 10% talent fee to all ticket sales that will begin in the 2025 season. And this is to subsidize the NIL efforts over at Rocky Top. What you think about that, man? It doesn't. I mean, I feel like it makes the people in the stadium feel like they're a part. They were already paying, you know. I'm sure their their dues and things like that. But now you're you're actually that every ticket you buy, ten dollars is going towards those students. It's like those those commercials, man. You can feed a village for just one dollar <laughs> <laughs> at a <the> top. <laughs> hey, you're man, a you are a part, man. But no, I. Dude, we knew this stuff was gonna have this type of stuff was gonna happen. They they they're finding ways to to pull money any way they can, and at least this way you can tell every kid on their program they're at least you know they're gonna get some type of money and every some type of revenue sharing because every time a ticket is purchased, ten dollars is gonna be a talent fee. So I mean, shoot, I like it. Shit, hey, uh, that's a hell of a deal because when you think about it, it's ten percent of all ticket sales, right? So if a stadium has 100,000 seats and they sell all tickets, if it sells out at $100 per ticket, then we're saying that that's 10 million yep. total ticket sales and 10% of that is a million bucks. A million dollars going to the NIL pool to be distributed to all players, and that's just one game. That's just one game. And we're not even saying those aren't even just home tickets. That are their ticket sales, period. So any ticket sold in that stadium, like you said, the whole hundred. And it's Tennessee. Most people, they go to those games at Rocky Top. They love it. So I like it. They might hold. What, what do they hold? They got to be holding up close to 100. Bro, bro if, that, if you say there's 100 kids on the, on the team, if 100 student athletes on the team, and that's a million dollars being dispersed across that hundred. That's ten. That's ten thousand a player. If my math serves me correct, that's hey. That's a solid little check in college. If it's an equal revenue share, hey, you're getting that money on. And that's just on top of like the other nil stuff. Like you'll get like you know shit. The walk-ons, like you know what I'm saying. Like that, every player just about on the team will get that amount of money. And I think Nick Stadium might 
I don't know how many. I got to look up how many of their stadiums served. Yeah, right. Do yeah, that research because it might be more than a hundred. Yeah, it's crazy. Those those college stadiums are are huge, man. I don't know. For me, I'm like as a fan, if I'm showing up to the game, it kind of feels like the like when restaurants want to add the twenty percent gratuity to your bill. Yeah. Like, hold on now, hold on now. Let me let me decide based on the service if I want to give twenty percent. Maybe the service is bullshit, and I don't want to give twenty percent. Yeah, I don't know, man. If I'm the consumer and I'm going to a game, I'm not complaining about ten extra dollars. I'm just that kind of person. Bro, it's not ten dollars. It's ten percent, bro. It depends on what the the the, oh. the fee of the oh, ticket oh. is. I thought it was just ten extra, but yeah. See, now that 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 might be a lot. Adding gratuity just on there is crazy. Like Depending said. on how expensive the ticket is, if I got it at the fifty yard line, you know it's a the rivalry game. Maybe it's a that's a, I don't know thousand dollar ticket. I don't pay for college okay. football tickets, but you know, maybe add, that's, that's being add on to my what my ticket cost is going to cost me ten percent extra. Yes, are they showing that to me as I'm buying it, or <laughs> is that like is it already <laughs> added in the ticket cost? No, I think they're just baking that in, man. They're not putting that. It's not itemized on your receipt. It is not it's itemized. We're in the ticket cost. I won't care. But I promise you, if I see it, <laughs> I will be livid. Livid. <laughs> they should definitely have a, have a note that's like, this will be financing our starting quarterback's new car. They, should, they shouldn't. Because I wouldn't <laughs> if they was doing that. I need, I just add it in this cost. Don't. Don't don't show me shit. Just add it in the cost. Don't show me that it was ten percent added. Be like these tickets are just this much. I don't need your reason for why they this much because that part, right? Like you said, is gonna make you mad. The second reason that Tennessee was in the news is because they were up thirty zero on Kent State, uh, and they ended up uh, kicking an onside kick. Yeah. And and mind you, this is in the first quarter. They're up thirty yeah. zero, and they kick an onside kick. Mm-hmm. Is I mean that just seems like the ultimate sign of disrespect. <laughs> that like we yeah. actually don't we don't care about your guys's feelings and and your pride. We actually want to put it underneath our cleats and and smack and, and, and stomp on it. I would have got kicked out as a coach. Like I would have fought, bro. Like I would have went across. I just started walking across the field in the middle of the game. Just like how Will Smith walked up to Chris Rock, I, that's how I did, bro. Like, there's no way. An onside kick up 30 in the first quarter. Come on, hey, bro. Come on, dude. Like, we we clearly were already not ready. We're not prepared. We, we hey, to whose fault, whatever. Like, maybe we just weren't on that level. But, like, to be disrespectful like that is crazy. And it's immature. Like, I, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's some... That's some shit you got to deal with when you turn on NCAA and you playing some eleven year old kid on the other side of the screen. Like you're not thinking that's some stuff that's gonna happen in real life. It's it's pretty immature, I think, of a coach. If a coach does that to you and you're on the other side, onside kick, boom, you realize, oh damn, they're not kicking it deep. They're kicking it fifteen yards and trying to recover yeah. before the ball is recovered. You are already making your way to the other side. Walking over there because he's saying, he's saying, f my program, f my kids, f my family, f all that, f anything. I got respect for me, so I'm going over there. I'm gonna probably kick him in the nuts. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna feel. I'm gonna kick him in the nuts. <laughs> oh, yeah, Just- man. Like that's what he deserves. Like that's what I feel like. Like that's what I feel like he deserves. That. Ultimate disrespect. Ultimate disrespect. There's something that's got to be sp- said about sportsmanship. You know what I mean? Like I understand it's a competitive game. You know, maybe he's trying to cover the spread. I don't know what the Tennessee coach got going on, man. But hey, I think there's you know sportsmanship not just for the other coach, but also for the opposing players. You know what I mean? Like kick kick the ball off, man. Kick the ball off so we can get this game underway. Okay, you didn't do it up six, seven. You did it up 30. Like, you could have did it the first time you got the ball. We were so – you realized we were easy to score on at, earlier, that whether it was 14-0. At some point, why at 30-0 did you decide this is the time we need the ball back in the first quarter? Another question that is constantly asked in college football these days, and it's if Travis Hunter can play both sides of the ball in the mm-hmm. NFL. Uh, RG3 – 
uh, just came out and said he thinks that it, it can happen. I'm curious what, what you think, DJ, as as the uh, the the group chat's best evaluator of of talent. I mean, you're you're essentially our uh, our glorified scout in, with the group chat. Um, what would you say? The kid's talent is like amazing. Of course, he can play both sides of the ball. Yes, I don't think that that's how he's going to be necessarily like used though. I don't see them like being like, yo, like we're going to have you playing both. Obviously, like he can play both at an NFL level. That's like clear. He's talented enough to play both. I don't know what you draft him as. I mean, you don't really see corners with those type of ball skills ever. You know what I'm saying? Like those are crazy ball skills at the corner. But, I mean, he's a playmaker on offense. I would like him to play defense if I was making decisions. Luckily, I'm not. So, you know, when I get there one day, maybe I will be. But. He, he kid can really play. Kid's got game, but I, I think he's you know he's super talented. I I'll be interested to see like in this league with all those hits you have to make at that position on the outside if you can play. Like you said, if they think you can play both, if you're gonna be able to play both sides of the ball, I just feel like they said that's asking a lot of of a kid coming in with professionals to be like, yo, you're gonna play both sides of the ball. It's, it, it doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that's a that's a good point. Either or is what it sounds like. Yeah, um, and and I agree with that. Not because of the talent, you know, and I haven't watched him enough to be able to evaluate, you know, and I'm not a, the the best talent evaluator. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not anything like Deej when it comes to evaluating these these rookies and evaluating talent. But from the standpoint of just like what a team, how a team is structured, and and what it what the demands are of playing one position you know it's a it's a lot and and also just thinking about like the development that also happens for from the dedicated uh time on task for that one position if you're playing defensive back each and every day and you're watching film on defensive back each and every day i think i mean obviously you're able to grow and become a better player now if you mix you know that time on task, if you cut it in half and now you're also playing receiver, you know, is that the best for your development as a player? Number one, but then also for the, for the team, if, you know, they're relying on you to do both, does that mean that they have to rely on somebody else to do both or rely less on somebody else? It, I think yeah. it's, it's better for teams, whether it's in, in, you know, sports teams or even just thinking about like from a business or corporate makeup too. I think having people have dedicated roles is really important. So, um, I agree with you on that. I just think like you can use him as a return specialist and things like that. I think you can get the ball in his hands, find ways to get the ball in his hands and those parts because he's electrifying. But like saying you're just going to like put him over there, like you said, put him at receiver and play him at DB. Do, do I get a lesser role at DB? Do I have like a guy who's spotty just in case he goes down? Now, now what if he goes down? What happens? Do I have to have one person to back up both spots on those or offense and defense? Like it's a it's a lot of moving pieces if you just yeah if you got to play all over the place. So looking at last week, we had our our pick 'em. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought. See, I thought it was way worse. It's not as bad as I thought. But you, hey, I'll let you. You got it. You won this week. Week one. It's on you. I. Hey, I love I love the scoreboard, man. It says uh, B Scar is up three to DJ's two. Uh, we'll take that, man. We'll, hey, we'll take a victory how we could get them. You know what I mean? Wisconsin didn't come through for me. Bama, Bama came to play. So I was a little bit shook after that. But hey, man. Mizzou. <laughs> Mizzou. Come on. Let's go. I took some gambles last week, man. I, I took some gambles that I shouldn't have taken. I, should have, I, I apologize to Mizzou. I should have had more respect for them as a, as a program. That Washington game, that hey, should have had more respect for that quarterback at TCU. That kid's a ball. I mean, not TCU, um, K State. Sorry, I would never disrespect y'all again. The quarterback is like Mr. Avery Johnson. You got it. You're you're the man. Sorry, I thought Washington was going to be able to do it. They couldn't. Uh, but you know, congrats to you this week, man. I don't know what you were thinking with that Wisconsin about Alabama pick though. I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't just, see. It. I don't know what you were thinking about, but whatever. Hey, man, good job. Hey, just going against the grain, man. You know, just going against I the did. grain made I no did. sense. I did. It, I was like, 
when you said it, I was like, dude, what? <laughs> Looking towards next week, we got a we got a nice little lineup here. Vanderbilt, Mizzou. I'm gonna roll with Mizzou. I gotta go Mizzou as well. I can't. NC State at Clemson. Oh, I'm going Clemson. If I'm going first, so obviously. I'm gonna go Clemson as well. USC at Michigan. I'm gonna take USC. I'll go Michigan. I'm not, I'm not, hey, I'm you know where I'm at. It's at <laughs> Michigan in the big house. They're not taking two L's in the big house. No way. All right, it's at C, baby. Utah at Oklahoma State. Does Utah have that quarterback? Is he is he playing? Yeah, he's playing. Utah. I got Utah too. That dude is a he's a baller. Tennessee at Oklahoma. I know my boy BB is gonna be ready. And you know what? I'm riding with my dog. Give me OU. Blue shooter, baby. Give me OU. Onside <laughs> kick, 30, 30 to zero in the first quarter. I, I don't have to hear any more. These guys are trying to win. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going Rocky Top. <laughs> Tennessee. And then lastly, we got Stan U, the Stanford Cardinal at Syracuse. I'm going Stan U. Give me kills. Give me kills. It's in the dome. Y'all gonna find out. Y'all gonna see what it's about like being in that ACC. This is gonna be nothing like the library. You hear me? Hey, we're not worried about it. Intellectual. Lock y'all in that dome. It's gonna be sweaty in there. Intellectual brutality. It's a it's a global mindset that translates regardless where you are. Whether you're in Palo Alto or goddamn northern New York, it, it don't matter. Okay? okay, doesn't matter. Okay, let's move on, huh? We got our uh, our NFL section here. Um, over the weekend, Bryce Young uh, had a terrible game. He's uh, the the news broke that that he's been benched uh, after two really rough weeks and in, in uh, uh, season last year that was was not an impressive. Uh, and Tom Brady uh, took the stand and says that rookies are being. Pl- forced to play too early and he said that we've dumbed the game down was his words and it was in the context of what college players are being asked to do and uh, the factory that now is college football where the playbooks are are such that you know quarterbacks can come in they could be plugged in and it'd be a pretty watered down playbook and you know they're expected to be there for maybe a year or two and then they're out of there whether that's a, a transfer that go into the league or whatever so now offenses uh, and, and quarterbacks are being developed with that mindset instead of being developed with the long game um, and being able to actually make the reads and become smart quarterbacks so I'm curious your thoughts DJ on on what uh, Mr. Tom Brady has said about the NFL becoming a dumbed down game. I agree. I feel like back when he was, you know, when he first came to the league, so there was a lot more reads through progressions and things like that, especially like for the quarterback position. I don't necessarily know that it's like that in every system. It is tough, man. You come in asking the kid to come over. Obviously, you got the number one pick for a reason. So now that kid's got to come in and literally is supposed to take over your whole program, like with no one there to lead him. No one there to help them, like, you know, with these these things. that They had a new coaching staff that year. Coaching staff got fired in, like, 11 games. Now you got a new staff. Like it's, <coughs> I think you're asking a lot of a young man who, like Tom Brady said, like, you're building off college success when the college game is pretty much wide open. Like, it's a lot of one-read looks and things going on. It's pretty wide open with playing college football. Uh, but NFL is different. Guys out there moving at tremendous speeds, and obviously some people are going to make that adjustment well. But I think you're, there's a lot of protections in for that position specific with like things that you can and can't do. There's more room for error in certain parts of the game in that position because like like Tom always talks about, like he couldn't lead his receiver certain places. He couldn't do this in the third, but like, so he had to really really process. All right, he's going to be here. He's going to be here. My read's got to be open now here. Like certain stuff that he had to learn as a quarterback. I don't know if they ha- they're they forced to learn that That's in today's NFL. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's interesting. I think that the number one pick is put into a really rough situation because he's essentially going to the shittiest team in the league last year. <laughs> so it's like he's not starting off with, you know, on a great foot or a great foundation. Uh, and, and the, the program, the organization, the work that they do to prepare, <laughs> prepare him, 
give him the proper support system that he needs, I mean, is just as important as, you know, picking the guy, right? And so I think that's where, you know, what they're doing in, in Carolina, obviously they, they picked him. Obviously, he's, you know, Bryce Young is an extremely talented quarterback. You know, he has some development that needs to happen on the field. But, you know, what I ask is like, to your point, what type of leadership is is surrounding him? You know, what what type of support is he being given off the field? It was the decision to have him start as a rookie last year. Uh, was that a decision that was made in the short term as like, hey, we just need it. We're just trying to squeeze out some wins but maybe we weren't ready for it. We didn't have the foundation, the infrastructure laid that he can be successful versus saying, you know what? No, we're going to have him sit. We're going to bring in a veteran quarterback that is going to play for the first half of the season before then Bryce gets his first start and has some better footing. And that maybe is more of a long view of now the quarterback can be, you know, Bryce can be more, uh, more confident at the helm going into year two, right? Because he didn't get his shit whacked. Well, that's a, the bad, the wrong word, but getting I mean, shit fucked up yeah, last yeah. year in season one. The truth this is exactly yeah. what happened. But I mean, you know, I think that's just one of those things. Like, I don't know why you would think as like as a team. I feel like nobody does great with that first, you know, the first overall pick. Unless you got it, I would say unless you got it from a team as a trade. Like, okay, and we weren't in those top picks. You know what I'm saying? Like, we traded things away and got into the top picks. Like Carolina, I think they they did trade some stuff, but I think they were already two. So like it wasn't like they were like down the board or something and traded up to get Bryce Young. You know? Like they were already in the top five. So any of those teams usually don't have either their quarterback got hurt the year before and they didn't do well, or they don't have a quarterback and are looking to replace him. You know what I'm saying? And if their their quarterback got hurt, they're usually not in the market for a QB. But I mean, if this the other way around, they're in the market. And then you're asking, like like you said, they're asking that kid to come in and turn around. A whole bunch of stuff. Not just like the QB is not just a problem if y'all went enough to be the first overall pick. It's not just him. There's a plethora <laughs> of things that you're trying to right. overturn. Right. You're it on a kid's shoulders. Usually a kid who came out of school at 20. Like rare are the Joe Burrows who went to school, came out at 23, 24, and is able to be mature enough to understand and, and help not only run the team, but help run an organization in a sense. Like you got to help lead an organization. So, I mean, it's. Yeah. A lot. You asking a kid who went to school for three years, he's twenty years old to come in and step in like what? Like without anything in place. Like this isn't shout out to CJ. He went in and killed it, but like the Texans have a lot more structure. the players around are the, there's some good players. A lot more structure in what the organization had going on with having a new coach who was a leader who's you know what I'm saying? Like you got you got a decent office line around you, you got that like just more things just better things like better toys to help you navigate whatever it is that you're about to do and they also helping you try to navigate it it's not like it seemed like a seems like shit on fire in carolina you know i just pray for the kid i hope like things get better for him man you know you, you hate to see that happen he seems like a good kid yeah best of luck to to bryce young as he um you know takes the the next the next game and who, who knows how many games after that to learn under um Andy Dalton who's coming in to be to be the starter has played a lot of years in the in the um uh in the league and you know hopefully Bryce bounces back with his confidence and you know we'll uh we'll see him again soon I'm I'm sure staying on the the threat of, of quarterbacks just want to take a moment um to uh to talk about Tua and uh you know I played with Tua for two seasons in Miami <clears throat> and uh you know, last year he suffered multiple concussions, uh, which sidelined him for a good portion of the season and then had another concussion uh, in this past game. And I uh, really just want to take a moment to, you know, say prayers up for, for Tua and, um, and you know, send uh, the support and, uh, and love his way uh, yeah. as he, he's been placed on injured reserve. He's on IR now to – uh, give him some time to one recover, but also make an informed decision on what what he wants to do. And uh, man, it's a it's a very difficult decision. And and I know that uh, you know when you have to put when you have your health and you know the, this passion uh, that you've had for your, your whole life when those are at odds with one another, and you essentially have to choose one. 
you know, it's really difficult. You know, it's really difficult to uh, to think about, hey, I want to, you know, I'm going to step away, potentially step away from this game that I love, that I've been playing for my whole life because I'm thinking about, you know, the years down the line and wanting to be healthy down the line. You know, it's a difficult decision to make. And it's a difficult decision to say, you know what? No, I want to live in the moment. I want to play. And I, I'll, I, I trust in God that, you know, things will be good down the line and, and, and I will be healthy. And, you know, either way, it's, it's so it's so tough, man. So I just I wish him the best as he goes to make uh, make a decision and as he recovers and uh, hope that he, he gets some time with his his family and loved ones to help him make that decision. Yeah, man. Uh, just like you said, prayers up to him. And, you know, you hate to see things like that happen. So I just hope he makes the best decision for him. And whatever that decision is, you know, I hope he feels solid in it and he's able to continue doing and living life in a healthy way. Deej, we got our culture section. Yes, sir. Culture section. Uh, let's just get into it, man. Some crazy shit's going on. Shannon Sharp's going on Instagram live while mm. he's over there getting freaky. Mm. Shannon Sharp was accidentally on Instagram Live while he was engaging in sexual activities. All of his Instagram Live <clears throat> subscribers, those who tuned in, heard, heard some, some moans and some groans uh, from Unk and his lady, Michelle. <laughs> mm. Unk, was, Unk was over there handling business, over there laying, laying pipe, and uh, was on Instagram Live. and. Uh, about 30 seconds in, you just hear, you hear his other phone going off yes. and, and folks trying to get a hold of him. And I don't, him nor Michelle did not hear those phones, man. They were, they were, they were engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Uncle Shay Shay was in there hey, getting it in and hey, talking nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, but you know he's a grown man. I I, I hate that he got caught up with the slip up. I don't know how you get on Instagram live without. There's a couple steps you got to go through. But whatever happened, it happened. Um, Unk's grown, you know what I'm saying? Engaging in grown folks' activities that are not meant for the internet. So he's got to be more careful next time, man. It was funny, and they use it as good promotion on the show for those little, you know, those. I don't know what those things is they be talking about. The, Blue shoes or something maybe having going on. Him and Ocho like to have the the little late night uh, nightcap discussions. <laughs> you know that it's a, it's a it's a lot it's a lot of sex talk going on there. So it was you know it was in the theme of the show. Yeah. Um, and the the conspiracy is which Shannon addressed it uh, when he <laughs> issued his apology on the nightcap was that folks said he did it on purpose, which folks are. You know, saying because they accused him of, of being homosexual when he stepped out of the car with his uh, that little orange purse or whatever that um, that bag he was. I forget what color it was, but that was the accusation. So, folks, your conspiracy theory theorizing, just like the Drake le the Drake leak. You know, whether he did it on purpose or not, the Shannon, the Shannon, did he turn on that IG live on purpose to let let motherfuckers know, hey, I'm I'm here, <laughs> I'm with what. <laughs> Uh, Ocho said, "I'm with Michelle. He with Michelle, not Michael." <laughs> Bro, no, nah, Unk defending the allegations. He like, hey man, I, uh, uh. But not Unk got three kids. He got grandkids. Why people thought Unk was sweet like that? Now see, Joe Budden said something that you know that that might be more of what I thought people were saying. Not necessarily but i'm not gonna you know repeat that you know that is between joe button and all um all i know is i was in there getting it in dog uh, hey, what did joe button say we'll have to look that up man i don't i don't you know joe button referred to it as Unk was defending that he might have been a part of the community not necessarily saying that he was with michael but that he might enjoy michael and michelle that's what he was defending <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's so what and said Unk was defended, but I don't agree with that, man. I think Unk just made a mistake, and he was in there doing what he do. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, do you, Unk? Uh, in, other, in other news, uh, <laughs> so uh, Diddy yeah. was, was taken into federal custody, um, and, you know, I haven't done enough research on 
the allegations, what's going on. You know, all I know is that Diddy got some weird shit in his history that, that he's been doing. The accusations are such that he's a really bad guy. And so I don't know. I can't really speak on it, but I'll let you take your piece as this is, yeah, this is kind of more in, in your uh, mode of expertise. It's crazy, you know, the, the old saying is you, sometimes you live long enough to see your heroes become villains. And I'm not going to say that Diddy was ever really one, of my, one of my heroes, but he might have been somebody's. And, you know, he was, he was a prominent role in the, in the black community, man. It's just sad and unfortunate to see what's going on. But you know, really, the, the what really startled me, you know, I don't know if the sex trafficking and all that stuff, they, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, obviously, they held him without bond, $50 million bond. They held him without bond, which is crazy. Like, they won't, you know what I'm saying? His bond, well, his bond got denied. My bad. And I didn't hold him without my bond got denied, which is like, I mean, obviously, paying 10% of $50 million would be no problem for Diddy. He'd be right back out. And so they're keeping him there. Um, and it, I feel like that's hard to do with a figure like Diddy, which is like, it's tough. But what I really thought was strange was the thousand bottles of baby oil and lube. Like, why are you, a thousand bottles? A thousand <laughs> bottles. Either he got the biggest slip and slide in the world, or it's some strange that hey, he's going crazy. They going crazy with the freak offs up there. I don't. I can't understand what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But a thousand bottles, a seize. This ain't even tell me what was used. This is a thousand bottles seized. Like they got that on hand at wherever he was at. Why would you have that many bottles? That's lube? a lot of bottles, baby. <laughs> A, lot of, a, a thousand lot. bottles of baby oil on the wall. <laughs> a thousand bottles of oil on the wall. I, I don't know. We'll see how this plays out. I don't really got uh, much else to say about it. The thousand dollars, the thousand bottles of baby oil, and they have found firearms and stuff like that, which is it's a lot. So I mean, you know, it, whatever. I yeah, he's been doing, but I'm sure they're gonna find out. And you know, so we'll we'll see we'll see how this plays out. Yeah, whatever he's got he had going on, or has got going on, the shit's shit's disgusting. You know, a thousand bottles of baby oil that just you know screams that that it's that you know there were there's more people in, involved in in what's going on. I, I think that that's you know it, it almost reminds me a little bit, and, and I don't know like the the details of the the Epstein stuff, but like you know, folks were incriminated from from that and so you know it's think about like the cultural leader that that diddy is you know hope that it was you know whatever he was doing these crimes he's committing that they were done you know on his own and that other cultural leaders especially in the black community and in hip-hop you know aren't don't end up and uh, doesn't come to light that they're a part of this whole this whole thing because that would that would just be be terrible, man. I think we uh we got a surprise outro. Oh, uh, do we Caroline, our producer? Outro? Yeah, Caroline has has uh, put together a surprise outro, and for for all the the audience here, uh, this is why Mizzou makes it on the pick 'em list every week. Is because uh, our producer puts this show together. is a uh, is a proud M I Z graduate, and whether Mizzou is ranked number seven or they are. Uh, defeated on the season mizzou somehow just makes it into the pickums every week to defend myself mizzou makes it into the pickums because they're ranked in the top 25 so <laughs> i can't help it that my alma mater has been consistently ranked over the past two years or you know we're in the sec so you know all their opponents are are also ranked because we're just kind of owning the game of college football over there so don't hate from outside the club <laughs> The Tigers are falling. I'm picking them. I well, picking I do them. have a little surprise outro for you guys today. So speaking of being chronically online or unaware of what's going on on social, not sure if you guys have seen this trend, but um, a lot of NFL teams and their social admins have been taken to the locker room with some old photos um, that they have dug up from – Facebook, from the depths of Facebook and seeing if players will autograph them. So obviously, you know, we're not all together tonight, but 
I did do some digging and I do have some photos for you guys that if we were able to ask you to autograph them, we would. So I thought we could just take a little trip down memory lane together and see what you guys haven't scrubbed from the internet. Are you ready? No. <laughs> I hope you didn't go on MySpace. I'm going to just say I don't that. Think MySpace is active anymore, but if I could, I would. Um, okay, so Brennan, you're up first. I have several photos here, and we'll just take turns going between you two. But uh, these are the photos that we would love to have you you autograph. <laughs> hey, that's a good flick. Hey, I'm proud of that. Man, I'll take that one. That's a, I'll, I'll sign that one right there. Come on, I look like who? Who is that? Anderson Pack? That's a young Anderson Pack. Come Your on. glasses look a little greasy, but that's okay. Yeah, if you if you saw me yesterday with my glasses on, it looked the same way. <laughs> okay, moving on to to DJ. Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Look at that. I'll sign that one. A little mohawk, a little like. Uh, is that a faux hawk? Little, yeah, a little facial hair trying to come in. It's a light photo. Okay, a little stash. Mine's still crispy, though. Stash. It is. The lighting is nice. You got that golden hour glow going on. The photo. That collar is terrible, though. That's a terrible collar. Trash. I probably just woke up. <laughs> it's a bacon nugget. It's rough. All right. Mm. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Looking at the man okay. in the mirror, they said. <laughs> <laughs> no, so let me let me let me speak on this. So this is the camera set up on a timer on my dresser, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a float like a butterfly, a sting like a bee, Muhammad Ali Adidas jacket. Uh, obviously, you see Muhammad Ali in the back. That's my varsity letter up there. This is my freshman year. Earned that that varsity letter as a freshman, so that's why that's on the wall. And if you could see that little piece of black paper right there, that's uh my that's a scan of my hand holding up number one on the printer <laughs> outside. <laughs> Cause I felt like as I do today, I am number one. I also see that big old thing of lotion on you. Right, You're right next to your trophies. <laughs> hey, it's only one bottle of, of baby lotion, okay? It's not a thousand. It's not a thousand. It's one. How many pictures did you have to, to snap to get the right one? Oh, man. Too many to count. You see, I had to get the, the Adam, Adam's apple was coming in. I saw I kind of like, you know, put put the neck back a little bit. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Whoa. Huh. What? what? Where are you? <laughs> Spring break, man. I knew this one was going to come up. <laughs> Where are you, man? Is this an episode of The Hills? <laughs> oh, Got to get this off the net, dog. <laughs> What's going on? Oh Jesus! You boys, the man. You know what's crazy? It's like all these girls are married now. So that's good. You know that's all. Awesome. <laughs> There's two other. Guys. Hey man. There hey is. bro. <laughs> White women have loved you from the jump, huh? Man, they've been around, bro. Been around. <laughs> what I really want to call out on this photo is. <laughs> The lack of skin we see between the bottom of your shoe and the top of your socks. Hey, that's not, hey, that's not. The top of the shorts from then and now. What his shorts look like now compared to what they look like then. It's eight inches of shorts missing now. Yeah, the big Jordan shorts, man. I, f I feel like I could bring, I might be able to bring those back. I mean, they're damn near Capri's. They're damn near Capri's. That's at USC. It's a SC and the little Pete, Pete the Carroll Star camp, Star. Rising Stars camp. Is that a Livestrong bracelet? No, nah, that's too thick to be a Livestrong. It's a little, that's a little <laughs> thick for the Livestrong. That is, that is, I will call out the double sock though. That's, that's the, that's not one sock you see there. That's the sock combo. It's two socks, both pulled up. That's two socks. <laughs> <laughs> two socks. Two two socks. Two white. Ooh. Just a little, just a little bit of white. A little bit of white. It's not like we got a bonus one on this one too. Yeah, hey, that's. that's <laughs> Where'd you get that? 
that second one's hard work being there. You know, let the fofo stain up for the jersey. The first one, that's a bomb. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in a bomb. Was that bomb. big gravy? That's that's a big gravy. I was 16 right here. Just want you to know. 16. Did you hit? Did you hit the ball here? Yeah, that ball's gone. It's out of there. It's out of there. <laughs> Look at that rotation. Jeez. It was, just, it was one of those like I think that bat before this I was mad. And I broke my bat. And the next to bat, I went up there and just swung out of my shoes. I hit a home run, but I did not see the ball. I swung as hard as I could. So this is that swing. And it was out of there. It was out of there, yeah. And then there was a lot of hard work. On a lot of hard work. Hey! Hey! That's well, why. Uh, that's why does he look like your guy? You're holding him hostage. <laughs> yeah. Uncle Snoop, he was high oh. as shit right there. Hmm. The question is, were you also? So, no, I wasn't in this picture. The reason was tell that to the because... picture. <laughs> 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 it was bowl game season. We were, I was offered a blunt by Snoop Dogg and Daz Dillinger. They did pass it to me. I didn't take it because we were in bowl game season. And you know, they was back then, they were like testing you for the bowl games. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do it. Can't speak on some of my roommates. I can't speak on their experience, but this was, uh, this was when Snoop and Wiz were on tour together after they did that little um, like that when they went to school together that album and movie or whatever it was and they were touring together so we got to turn up with Snoop and then Wiz and that's when Juicy J was all over the, uh, the Bombay gym yeah we were in backstage with Wiz and Juicy J yeah that was that, you know what's, the, what's dope about this picture I'm with my mom this is that um Obama's speech in Greensboro. Um, so it was really dope picture, dope um, time when he was doing his presidential campaign. And uh, this, I remember this being the first day I asked my mom, I was like, yo, like, you know, why the hell we gotta go here? Obviously you see it on my face. I did not want to be there. She got me dressed up in a sweater with a tie and all, all, all the shit's on. I'm like, mom, why we gotta do this? She's like, you know, Deez, this is like the first time I'll ever be able to tell you you can really become anything. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, you know, before, like, I don't, I couldn't tell you that you could have became the president. Like, I've never seen a black president. She's like, this is our first opportunity to be able to see that come true. And I was like, oh, that's like, you know, super dope. And then I remember he, um, you know, he came out to, uh, uh, change gonna come and I thought that was really really dope just like the first time I'd heard it you know not besides like it family reunions cookouts it had never been like somebody's like freaking theme song I thought it was like super dope that's how he walked out and it was just you know it was cool sitting there with my mom I remember that was just being a that was a, that's a cool photo I always like that photo I've never I wanted to get rid of it when I was younger I was like I look stupid as hell but as I've gotten older I've come to enjoy this photo a lot. that's a beautiful story number one number two when she's like Okay, DJ, say cheese. This was this was your, this was your look. I don't know if she said say cheese. You know how mom <laughs> don't say nothing; they just kind of snap the photo. Like I look over, my mom got this big ass camera in my face. Just, hey, <laughs> <I'm> like, <"What?" laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> moms don't like necessarily say say cheese. Like eventually they do. But, like I think this is just she was just like on her phone, like turn around, phone in my face, like how she does now. The same way, and I just got to be ready now. But when I was younger, you know, it's early in the morning. She didn't got me out of bed for this. I don't know what's going on. I'm pissed. And there you have it, folks. Another episode of the group chat. Until next time, we'll see you. Peace. Peace.